Hey there guys, Mr. Short Hitter here. Today, I'm gonna do a video on how to break 90. I'm gonna give you at least 10 tips that hopefully can help you break your scoring barrier. First, let me hit this tee shot. So one thing I hope you notice there, I hit that tee shot to the left, and the reason I hit that tee shot to the left, the out of bounds is on the right. The first tip for breaking 90 is avoid penalty strokes at all costs. If you're hitting two, three balls out of bounds in water hazards, it's gonna be really tough to climb out of that hole because it's also difficult to get through 18 holes without three putting. So you make a few doubles because you hit the ball out of bounds, and you got a few three putts, it's real difficult to break 90. So the first key to breaking 90 is you have to avoid penalty strokes even if that means hitting it on the other side of the fairway and even in the trees so guys i've got 118 yards downwind to that pin so i'm gonna hit a pitching wedge So I'm on the other side of the green. I pulled that ball left just a little bit off the fringe, maybe a couple paces. So I paced it off. I'm 16 paces from the pin. 16 paces this side of the pin puts me here, which is dangerously close to the trees, to the out of bounds, and to this little creek that runs through here. So again, another key to breaking 90 is avoiding penalty shots at all costs. So if you're in that situation I was in, you want to air towards the left side and end up in the area that I was versus ending up over here. Further left, left of the cart path is no problem. Play to the appropriate side of the green. I believe in positive thinking as much as the next guy. But I kind of look at each hole like I would a traffic light. Red light, yellow light, green light. Certain holes you've got wide open, they're green lights, just go right ahead. Other holes are red lights where you kind of want to stop. Other holes, yellow, it kind of depends on how you feel. So in this instance, I've got a 379 yard dog leg right and for me, my carry is about 215 yards. That's the tightest part of this fairway. So if you're a 90 shooter, you don't have to try to make a par on a hole like this. What I suggest, and certain holes, it's okay to play for a bogey. What I will do here is I'll hit a four hybrid. I know I'm not gonna get in any type of trouble. I'm gonna stay short of the water. I'm gonna stay left of the out of bounds and I'll be fine. Now, there's a perfect example, guys. I hit a really big hook there off the toe with this four hybrid, but because I hit a four hybrid and not a driver or three wood, I don't have to worry about reaching that water. So let's get down there. Another key to breaking 90 is you have to practice your chip outs. I see so many people that just get to a, a shot there in the trees. If they, they either try this shot and try to hit a three wood down here through the, through the trees, which would be ultimate disaster, or they just get up there and take whatever club they chip out with, maybe a wedge and just, just bump it and end up miss hitting it. So we're gonna punch this out with the four hybrid. So guys, I've got 90 yards to the pin here. I think most golfers that shoot in the 90s or low hundreds would be better off learning to not necessarily hit a wedge full all the time and would be better off kind of hitting three quarter, three quarter shots. So I could hit a, a full 54 degree wedge here, but instead I'm gonna hit a little easier 48. And that's gonna allow me to, to make a little easier swing. I think a lot less can go wrong. You still want to make sure to accelerate through the shot, though. Perfect example. Hit it a little thin, but not a bad shot. Like most golfers, break 90. It's important to work on your putting. However, this putt is about... 10 footer or so, you definitely don't want to get a, get too aggressive on putts like this because at 90, you don't have to make a lot of them. It's more important to not three putt. Well, sometimes you will make them. It's 
going right into the sun so I can't get behind it. What I'm about to tell you may go against conventional thinking, but just going back to the other theory of red light, yellow light, green light. I've got a par three here. It's about 190, 175 or so to the front edge of that green. It's bunkers on both sides. If you go right in the bunker, you're short-sighted. On a hole like this, it's probably against conventional thinking. Where are you going to score better at? If you happen to hit it either short-sighted or in one of those bunkers, or if you're short of the green. If you're short of the green, you should leave yourself an easy little pitch shot where you might make par, but most likely you'll make no worse than bogey. If you hit in one of those bunkers or right of those bunkers, you can really get into some trouble. But I think as a 90 shooter, I would hit a five hybrid and just make sure I hit it short of all that trouble. It's a little left, but it's not gonna reach any of the trouble. If I would have hit an extra club, I probably would have been in one of those bunkers. And as a 90 shooter, if you can avoid those bunkers, why not do it? One thing that I recognize is that I make more putts when I don't worry about missing them. I had that little, whatever that putt was, a four footer downhill. And it was pretty easy to me because I recognized that I might make it, I might miss it. Just hit the best putt I could hit. So I think another key to breaking 90 is managing your expectations, playing strategically, but not worrying about the results after that. Sorry guys, there's a lot of shade over here and sun's going down also. On a hole like this, this is 356, dog leg right. The carry of that creek is about 210. I don't generally have any problems carrying it, even on a little miss hit. You may not strike the ball consistently. Your miss hits may be a little worse than mine. A hole like this is at least a yellow light and maybe a red light. So we've got a bridge, it's about 198 to that bridge. I wanna hit a four hybrid and just play it over there to the left at that bridge. Now I'm taking the out of bounds out of play and I'm taking the creek down out of play. You know, generally, if you've got two hazards on the same hole, you probably want to look at a red light if possible. So bogey's not a bad score here. We can play this as a three shot hole if we need to. I lost my balance there, but again, just a little left. All right, guys, so I've got 173 to the pin there. Now, I would have no problem hitting a four hybrid on that green. That would probably be the shot I would try, or worst case scenario, I would maybe aim that, try to get it on the left side of the green. If I was a trying to break 90, that would not be a, a, a shot for me. There's a huge area between the flag and there's a tree on the left side of the fairway. That's a huge area. And if I miss it right of that, I've got 30 yards, 35 yards till I can get to those trees. So if I'm trying to break 90, I'm gonna play from here 173 yards. I'm gonna take those trees out of play. I'm just gonna take an eight iron here and just hit it down there and give myself a nice little easy wedge into the green where nothing can go wrong. <music> 43 yards to that pin. So I hit that eight iron about 130 cold air, not bad. From 43 yards, this is the area where I say as a trying to break 90 is gonna be super important. 40, 50, 60 yards, getting real competent inside that area to where you can hit good shots, get up and down on occasion. Uh, if you can really consistently give yourself at least putts at pars and never, never, never make a double bogey from this area. You know, it's funny guys, just as I'm talking to you about the value of, of laying up and playing conservative, I'm a, a very, very conservative golfer myself, but in some of these scenarios, I would have never thought of for myself to actually play a, play a shot like that. But you know, thinking about it from 40 yards, I can hit the ball pretty darn close. I may think about playing a little more conservative even than I do at times, especially when there's a lot of trouble around the greens. Kind of getting ready for the season, I think. Mr. Up Down today. 
This is a tougher nine out of the two on this golf course for sure, by a couple shots actually. And my lowest score on this nine was three under, and I shot three under, and I think I had 11 putts. Got four through four holes. I think I probably just jinxed it now though. So guys, just like the break 80, it's important to club up. However, on this hole, I've got 191 to a blue pin. And I can't really club up because sometimes that green is hard. So I only hit a high wood. I'm not really certain how the ball is gonna react when it hits the green. Okay guys, so one other thing I will say for certain, here is a very, very important distance. It's about 20, I would say 22 feet. 20 feet and beyond really is a very important distance to break 90. I mean, this is where I see so many people that shoot in the 90s or the hundreds to where they do two things. One, they are really bad with distance control and two, they rarely ever play enough break. So I would say lag putting over 20 feet you want to make sure you play enough break and work on some drills where you can get the correct distance. So guys, another thing I would say to break 90 is to know your shot shape. However, do not exaggerate it. And what I mean by that is a lot of people say if they hit a slice, a left or right slice, they'll aim for it. But once they aim for it, they will then swing even further left making the ball slice even more and it just becomes a, a downward spiral where the ball slices more and more and more if you have a shot shape that's a left to right slice then i would aim for that slice but i wouldn't exaggerate it by swinging more left just to simplify it i would aim my club and my body left but i would try to swing as if i'm swinging down the middle of the fairway so my body would be left but when I came down, I would still try to swing out. Essentially, you would be thinking about swinging out to the right. So that way you wouldn't over slice it and slice it right of the trees. So it probably would look something a little like this. So guys, since I aimed left there, but I swung out to the right as a slicer, the ball didn't really slice that much. If I would have aimed left and then swung even further left, I'd have sliced it all the way across the fairway. All right, guys, so I'm going to give you two tips here. The first one I'll say is the same as the break 80 is the club up. I've got a red pin here, 154, which would normally be a seven iron. Instead of seven iron, I'm going to hit a five hybrid. And that way I should definitely should definitely get there and worst case scenario, I'm middle of the green. The other tip I'm gonna say is as a 90 shooter, you almost never wanna aim at the pin. Now, if this pin was on the right, I would be aiming left. The pin is left and I'm still gonna aim pretty much at the left side because all the trouble's on the right. So you almost never wanna aim at the pin. Even if you've got a shot from 120, 130 yards, there is gonna be a better approach because you have to realize your odds of actually hitting a green from 130, 140 yards are you're probably only hitting one out of three or one out of four greens. So you don't want to miss it on the wrong side. So we're going to take this, we're going to take extra club. We're going to aim at the left side of the green. And as long as we don't go right, we're fine. So we've taken all of the trouble out of play. So guys, there you go. I hit, a, I hit that shot really well and it only flew about seven yards past the pin, 161. Knowing your distances, you don't have to be exact, but you have to have a, a pretty good range of, of distances that you're, you're gonna hit the ball and knowing that is only gonna help you. enough break. It's getting dark out here, but I hope you can forgive me. I want to give you nine holes worth of tips. So I'm going to still try to play the last couple holes and make it a little, a little dark, but you still be able to hear the tips. So one thing you may notice there, I didn't tee it up. Now, normally on a, all, every hole, you want to tee it up that you can. Every hole, par five, par four, par three, whatever it is, you want to hit it off a tee. But the reason I didn't tee it up there is I wanted to make a point. 
That was a four wood I hit off the tee box off the ground. If you've got a three wood in your bag, there's a very good chance that you've got no business hitting it off the fairway. Definitely not out of rough unless it's sitting up in the first cut. I work with the three wood. I try to hit it at times, but even myself, you know, I put this four wood back in the bag. It's just a three wood is just such a tough club to hit. So you probably want to get rid of that three wood. Get yourself a four wood or five wood or whatever you might need. I do have a link in the description for a high wood, which is like my favorite club. I'll put a link in the description to a video that where I use that club. So guys, I've got 115 to that pin. It's a little uphill. It's a little cool out, so it's probably playing closer to 120, which I should hit a nine iron here. Hit it behind that pin, but I'm gonna hit a pitching wedge. Let's just see how I do. I know I should club up, but let's see what happens when we don't do that. So I hit pretty good, we'll see. Actually, I hit really good, did make it almost pin high here. So nine would have definitely been in a, in a tough spot. This leads me to my next tip. This is a basic putt off the fringe. So whenever you can, you want to putt the ball. You want to use the least loft possible. If you can hit a seven iron and just with little loft and just learn the touch of that shot, a lot less can go wrong. I hit a hybrid a lot and in a situation like this, I just putt it. All right guys, so another tip I'm gonna give you, I'm not gonna be able to illustrate it here because it's getting pretty dark, is pay attention to where the T markers are lined up. You know, I was looking at these T markers and if I lined up even with where those T markers lined up, I would be aiming in the right rough. So you have to pay attention to which ways the T markers line you up. I normally set up right behind the ball. That way you can get your target not based on the markers. And we're gonna hit it and find it the last two holes. Wasn't for the range finder, I wouldn't be able to see the flag anymore, guys. I've got 108 to the pin. We're gonna hit a pitching wedge. So another tip I'll give you here is you wanna kinda know your tendencies from different lies also. I'm swinging up the hill. And I know I have a tendency to not get to my left side. And when I do that, I flip my hands and the ball goes left. So I need to make sure I, I get up and get to my left side. So I made sure I swung through that and got to my left side. Not sure if I got back to the pin though. Get all the way back to pin high, guys. Oh, didn't hit it. We really see the hole from six feet now. So there's a perfect example of what I was talking about. You know, I had a little putt there. I should have got it to the hole, but I didn't. But I didn't even think twice about it. Tapped it in. It's over. Get it out the hole and move to the next hole. Felt good, guys. All right, guys. We found this ball right in the middle of the fairway. We got 165 uphill, cold air to that pin. We're going to hit a four hybrid. Then we'll go look for it. I have a little clubhouse light and we'll finish this nine off. Three putt the last. So my last tip, if you're trying to break 90, is to not let a bad hole ruin your score or ruin your day. You know, we all play this game. We all try to play our best and we want to do our best. We want to give our best every day. But Every day is not going to be that day. Some days you're going to play worse than others. It's all about managing your expectations, determining your strategy, and going with that. But the best strategy can't make you play great golf. The best strategy can't make you play your best. All it can do is help limit the issues and limit some of the disaster holes that are bound to happen to all of us. So I'll give you one quick story. I used to play with a guy who would really, really blow up when he played a bad round. Uh, I mean, there was one instance to where, and this, this happened more than once, but there was one instance where I took him to my favorite golf course, a beautiful golf course, Cantini and Wheaton. It's like, a, we played 27 holes there. It's like $160 to play 27 holes at the time. And that was, you know, 10, 10 years ago. And he started playing bad and 
he started playing with a seven iron. He just played the rest of the round with one club, all because he struggled, had a couple bad holes, and apparently probably because I was beating him. We weren't playing for money or anything, just for fun. So don't be that guy. You know, try your best, play your best. But at the end of the day, it's a game. Have a good time. And any event, I hope you liked the video. I hope you got something out of the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Till next time, Mr. Short Hitter, out. Welcome to my channel, I'm Mr. Short Hitter. You can be short up the T and still be a winner. I'm here to inspire you to play your best.